Oh yeah, sexy biscuits. Nice. Long black clothes, 1975. Welcome to another arcade versus home port. In this video, we're taking a look at this game, UN Squadron, released in the arcades by Capcom in 1989, and I believe it runs on the CPS hardware. We'll be comparing it to the SNES and/or Super Famicom version that was released in 1991. It kind of mixes it up and takes a different approach to the layout and the way you upgrade your plane to this version. Anyway, if you look at the characters, Mickey Simone, um, he flies the Tomcat because why not? It's the 80s. I love these bits. Taking on this mission is like shaking hands with the devil. Uh, Greg Gates, who's basically Bluto from Popeye, and he's, um, he's uh, you know, moonlighting. Greg Gates, A-10 Thunderbolt, Tank Killer, or Rattler, if you like Action Man or G.I. Joe. So they are basically from an, uh, and look at this, Winners Don't Use Drugs. That's right, they use Vulcan guns and fuck off big missiles. Oh, look, your logo is a flaming unicorn head that's really cool, because obviously this is before unicorns became associated with liberals and stopped being cool. Right, so basically this game is one or two simultaneous two-player side-scrolling, shoot em up where you go into the Middle East to stop, I don't know, a dictator or stuff like that, and then you earn a certain amount of points, and you can upgrade the weapons on your plane. I never played it back in the day, but... <clears throat> I would absolutely love to because I imported the Japanese version which is known as Area 88. There's the story, pause the screen if you want to read it. Why is it the UN Squadron? It should be something like NATO Squadron because it's NATO that have kept the world safe since the end of WW2. Not the UN and not Europe or the EU as much as they seem to like to think so. So yeah, it should be NATO Squadron. <laughs> politics. Anyway, so it's called Area 88 in Japan, both the arcade and the Super Famicom which I had, and that's because it's based, if you look at these pictures, on an anime or manga. Capcom at the time decided they want some of their franchises uh, to be based on sort of, I don't know, well-known uh, characters or popular franchises or stuff like that. So yeah. Anyway, let's get into it. Right on the, uh, I won't be playing it on the SNES. I'll be playing it on my GXD Mini Arcade HD because why not? Right, let's get into it. Daredevils, quaff quaff hair. Bang in as many credits as you can. That's what I say. Live like a king. Day Pro must be the people who made the anime. Right, so you got your three characters and each has a different plane. So you have, what is that, uh, an F-20, an F-14 and a Thunderbolt, otherwise known as an A-10 tank killer, or a Rattler, Cobra Rattler, from Action Force and or G.I. Joe. So we're going with that one. Now, it's Michael Wincott from The Crow, and he, it really is Michael Wincott from The Crow, and he hasn't got his cocaine addiction and eyeball fetish. Right, I should be reading this. And now Bilbo Baggins lets you upgrade your plane. I don't know why, like, for such a shit hot, you know, army unit or um, air, air, air unit. Got that scruffy old bastard. Right, you can launch missiles in wide range. Bullpup 2. I thought Bullpup was when the magazine was behind the handle. I don't know. We got. I want. Where's my money? Oh, hang on. We'll go with that one. Time. Running out of time. Here we go. Right. So fire, fire straight forward and one goes down. Nice graphics, bright graphics, sharp sprites. Thing is, for 1989, they were probably better looking, you know, shoot them up. So I'd probably say our type was better looking than this. I remember this from the, the SNES version. The tanks are an absolute bastard. I will also say this. Also, the enemies, they did like a chocolate thing and changed direction. Uh, you, unlike more, most shoot em ups at the time, you actually have, get these bastards, uh, a health gauge. So that kind of makes it up. But yeah, I would have been, well, I probably would have been quite alright with this back in the day. But certainly games like our type, which is 87, um, you know, were better looking. Again, I think this is the CPS system. Oh, that's my alternative fire. Now, what's this? A mid stage boss? Or Continue, mid stage boss. These are limited, so get them in there while you can. They're useful because they destroy his rockets when they come forward. And I'm at rocket. 
Oh, 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 sorry, go up this way, as far that way, come back, go up this way, as far that way. The only problem is, to combat you, he launches those bloody lock-on missiles, which are a pain in the ass, because they bloody lock-on. See? Oh. Hey! As the Fonz would say, if he was, in fact, a pilot, which he's not. Although he did jump a shark once. That's it! Mission one clear. Bonus points. I guess that ties into upgrades and stuff like that. That's pretty short. Sure. I've just left the atmosphere. Uh, this is merely the beginning. Congratulations. Thanks, Pluto. Uh, the target is the invisible stealth bomber. It can attack targets without being de detected. Homing missiles can't even defeat it. <clears throat> How am I going to defeat it if it's invisible? I have something for you. Are you interested? Yes. Falcon, Phoenix, Far I haven't got enough money. Okay, look at this. He's again sitting in front of all this ordnance. It's the 80s. He's probably allowed to smoke in there as well. Thank you. Be careful. Got lightning. Yoink. So, like, do you know what I mean? It's not terrible graphic. I mean, it's nice graphics. There's a charm to it. It's just, as I said, it's not living the graphical dream, if you will. I'm trying to think whatever games shoot up, size comes shoot up. Oh yeah, all the um, sort of gradient styles like that, they, they kind of dump all over it. But then to be to be fair, <coughs> Capcom have tried to mix it up a little bit. But the music's alright. I like to know, considering this is the Middle East or something like that. It's very American looking air force, isn't it? Oh! I've got an idea. Go up it. Ah, you can't shoot me, can you now? Oh! Fuck it, but that bastard can. Oh, look at that! Lots of stuff going on. No slowdown. It'll be quite interesting to see. Um, oh, can I not get health? Health in an airplane game. It'll be interesting to see if there's how much slowdown there is on the, um, the snare or the Super Famicom, because it's balls! Um, a very, very, oh, continue, early game, and very early games were laden with slowdown. To be fair, quite a lot of other games were laden with slowdown. Was it to do with the fact that his processor wasn't as fast as the Mega Drive? Oh, there's two of them. Yoink. Oh, there's three of them. As you can see, it's a bit tips frisky. And I'm dead again. Continue. You only get one life. You get health and you only get one life. So, yeah, again, so it's the Middle East, right? Oh, air mines. But he's got America's then most expensive and technically advanced stealth bomber. Just pointing these things out, but it's good to know that it's not invisible. Oh, it's bloody hard. And, oh, that's right, my rockets don't work on it unless I directly aim them at its ass. Ooh. Wasn't the original stealth bomber did a flyover of an air, some air show in the UK when it was first, like, announced? And I'm not making this up, look it up. And there was some British bloke who built, like, a homemade radar unit, and the Americans denied it. But it actually picked it up. And he proved it later. That would be awkward, wouldn't it? And also, the stealth bomber was completely useless and ineffective against the aliens in Independence Day. Lucky Bill Pullman entered the fight at the end. And that bloke from National Lampoon's. Continue. The missiles, they do nothing. Oh, he's blown up and I've just wasted them all. Put some mission two. Clear! So yeah, it's not it's nothing to rock your rock your freaking world, man. But it's alright. You know, I would have enjoyed this in the arcades in 1989 if I actually saw it. But let's jump to the SNES. I was gonna say Super Famicom version, but it's not Area 88. So let's jump to the SNES version. So here we go with UN Squadron released in 1991 by Capcom and running on well, it's not running on a Super Famicom, as I said, it's running on a GXD Mini Arcade. Now, uh, only fate will determine if we live or die. That or a fuck off big rocket. The intro is different, as you can see. Our game is three years later, so that kind of makes sense. Only a madman would take on this mission. Lucky they found me. Uh, look at the size of his massive cop pit. See what I did there? So, yeah, it's a different intro. Um, I've got a bit of scaling. It's kind of a little bit of Mode 7, basically, when it spins around, because obviously everything back then is a very title was all about letting you know that this console could do these things now I imported it uh, you know area 88 because um, me Miss CVD me machines magazine 
uh, gave it absolutely amazing reviews, said it was pretty much the best side scrolling. Got your uh, um, flaming unicorn head there before the room by liberals. So the title screen same to the arcade. The intro simplified and stuff like that, but CVG magazine said it was basically the best shoot 'em up at the time. Again, it's very early, so what was it competing against at this point? Super R Type and Gradius 3. Both which suffered from a massive amount of slowdown, so I'm going to assume this did, but just from this demo, you can hear it sounds like the arcade, you can see it looks remarkably like the arcade, really, really does. Now, I hadn't played the arcade back in the day, but I do remember from playing this, is it doesn't have such uh, a linear path through the game. There are kind of ways you can, uh, not massive amounts, not like choose your own adventure, but you can pick different levels and stuff. I think, I can't remember, it's, it's been ages since I played this. And also, you're not limited to three planes. You can be an individual and then you can pick a number of different planes depending upon how much money you have. Again, a little bit rusty at this anyway. But other than that, plays exactly the same. One weapon, the second is a power-up weapon and you've got a health bar, so it's not just one hit in the bottom left-hand corner. EGM! in North America said it was the 97th, 96th best SNES game of all time. I do not really think I would go that far, but it's an all right shooter. Look, easy, I'm gonna go with easy because why not, fire. So let's get into it. Now you're gonna notice it, the, like I said, the presentation and polish has taken a hit, but it's doing its own thing. So game start, there we go. Select one of your three pilots, completely kind of, you know, simplified here. We're going to go, look, he's got a skill, he's really dexterous, so he can use um, loads of weapons at once. His plane can take a shitload of destruction and he just keeps going, so we go with him. And the bloke on the far left just likes quaffed air. Right, here we go. Right, here's what I mean, uh, Michael Wincott is back. And so, select your target area. So, do you not go through it like you do in the arcade, or does that mean you can, this is why I get confused, it's been a while. You can backtrack, because it's about earning money. Money. Money! So I guess we can only go here. Uh, the target is the front line. I take them in and, uh, yeah. Thwarting Project 4. Thwarting. There's a word that's not used often enough. Right, so simplified again, but you got Bilbo. But look, we've got six planes, but we only have enough money, which is just underneath my name, to fly the first one. So even though this is a UN um, mission, they're still making me buy my own shit. That's a bit weak. We'll go with that. Are you sure I want this? Yes, because I can't have anything else. Now, you can have two weapons, three weapons here. This is kind of cool. It fires a missile up and lasers come down, but you only get one. These are bombs. They're a bit meh. Um, and we'll go with this. Got to remember the button layout on this little mini pad is weird. But that's just like, um, it says, um, was it cluster? It doesn't, it just, hang on. I'll go to X. It just does a shield around you. Circle of bombs around you. You don't have enough money. Oh, you bastard. What have I done wrong here? I'm sure I could exit on this. Yeah, fucking Bilbo, he's high on weed. That bollocks, that's because of that, uh, you know, button nothing. Looks just like the arcade. My f god awful ugly face is at the top left of the screen, and the money you can earn things like that, it really does look like the arcade. Sounds like the arcade. Got my health at the bottom of the screen. Some of these icons are health power-ups, some are weapon power-ups, some are money. Um, I think that's a help, but it's, it's tits frisky. It really is. It really, really is. Hey! And it, I mean, it's a port of an arcade game that was supposed to suck a large amount of money out of your pockets, but I think, kind of, seeing as we just bought this game, can you do us a favour? We're children at this point. You know, I just dropped 30, I dropped, I don't know, probably 50 quid on it in 1991 in import. Oh, look, slow down, there's our slow down, you see that? Just in case you didn't see it, I'm going to say slow down, which is, to be fair, because obviously CPS is more powerful than the SNES. Uh, the SNES's problem was the process of being too slow, wasn't it? But very early games and shoot 'em ups all suffered. Oh shit, I should have had bollocks, I should have had bollocks. There you go, select your target. Wait, what? No continues? Oh, it comes flooding back. See, that's where the arcade is better. I just want to pop in money and carry on playing. I don't like that. All right, so we've got to do it again from the start. But look, i got more money now. Have I got more money? I think he took that guy's wallet. Points for the quote. Yes, Bilbo. I'm going to go with this. 
I've got a cheeky idea. It's not going to work. Right. But you get to see a cool weapon. So anyway, right. Slow down aside. That was a given. We knew that was going to be on the cards. But it bears a very close resemblance to the arcade. I personally think the Mega Drive could have done this. I really do. What the hell? I really do. Am I almost dead already? That's a bit shit, isn't it? Yay, so it not only blows them all up, but it gives you some some health back. It's these fuckers. Again, the music's lovely, but it's so kind of joyous and all these people are dying, but let's have a sing song on the campfire. Oh what the fudge? Help, please. You. Yeah. Again, I'm really not sure what I'm recognising to be health. And uh, and also, I'm not sure the route, to, uh, how you plan on that second screen. By all means, you know, let me know. Ooh! Right. What's this? And it did nothing. Hey! No, it did something, but... Well, it blew him up. So that's, I guess it's a, a question of what weapon you select. And the, the weapons, there are far more weapons in this than there are on the, um, oh look at that, that's, mi that's mixed it up, look at me, I've got sprite, sprite scaling. Um, yeah, so there's far more weapons and stuff like that, so, ah, yeah, so now it's a completely different game. And we got options and where to go, but I want to try and do the level that I did just now on the first time around in the arcade for comparison. Uh, the target is the ground carrier. No, nope, I didn't. Can I come back? Oh well. No, 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 no. Right, can I buy that? 101 thousand. Yes. See what I mean? So, um, it's mixed it up. It's made a, you know, a bit of a difference to stuff and how you can progress. Which again is cool and interesting and you would have loved it, I guess, if you were a fan of the arcade. But I'm very much of the ilk that I just find the simple, more linear approach of the arcade, I don't know, more appealing. Maybe that's weird for a game that's mixed it up and offers far more variety and stuff like Slowdown. But, yeah, danger. Slow down. Yeah, well, you know, like I said, maybe it's being a bit, you know, well, hang on a minute, let's give you something else. Why, don't you, why do you not like that? It's, it's, I don't know. I guess it's a question of whether you played it in the arcades first or played it on the, um, the SNES. Lovely parallax. Yeah, played it on the SNES and how you prefer your shooters to go. Right. I don't know. I just want to, I just want to fly. Uh, we go there. Area 88, see? Combat Squadron called Wolfpack. Yes, because I can't have anything else, you cheap bastard. Are bombs going to make any difference up here? Oh, it's even different. And look! I mean, there's no denying this is a lovely looking game. Uh, you know, and obviously the fact that it, it, it does so much more than the arcade, like I said, it's, it's really cool and a nice touch, but do you know what? I'm going to call it like this. I prefer the arcade. I prefer the simple drop in a load of money and, uh, you know, just play from start to finish. Nice weapon, the actual weapons, something like that's a touch. I guess it's like what they did with Super R-Type over R-Type 2. It's how you, it's how you like your steak served, isn't it? Yeah, looks really, really close to the arcade. There's no denying that pin to slow down. We would expect that sounds really, really nice. Has really, really, really tight controls. I just prefer the arcade because of, you know, the more simple approach but obviously your minus may vary and i'd love to know what you think particularly if you played this in the arcade played it at home played it at both you know uh, and as always let me know what you think and i'll see you later